Salt Commission to raise RTE's report of compensation to the Iona Institute and others. Uh, we would have two minutes each initially and Sorry. one minute for a supplementary, but I'd ask deputies to be careful of what we say in relation to what's allowable by standing orders. Thank you, Count Corley, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak on, on this uh, very important issue of national uh, interest, given the amount of people who have not only contacted RTE, but many of the deputies around this House. And there is a massive public discourse going on about this particular issue right now as we speak, and momentum has built up. So it's really important that in this chamber we get a chance to at least have some sort of a level of discussion around this issue. Count Corley, and Minister, citizens of this country must have confidence in RTE to moderate and facilitate robust debate in issues of social concern and particularly at this time issues around LGBT rights and equality. In relation to the Saturday night show a number of weeks ago, it is quite clear in my opinion that RTE's decision to pay out a report at €85,000 in compensation has severely damaged public confidence in our national broadcaster and we need to get to the bottom of this. We are at a very important time in relation to LGBT issues here in Ireland and we have come so far and over the next two years we are going to debate some very, very important issues that will, please God, bring the same rights to every citizen in this Ireland that, are, that, that some don't have at this stage. And in order to do that, we have to have a national broadcaster that allows robust debate and allows people to be challenged around their views. I want to ask some questions in relation to the issue for RTE to pay out a, a reported 85,000 in the time that I've le uh, left. I want to ask, was there one person in charge of this issue, one point of contact from the moment that they decided to deal with this issue? Until, until they paid out this compensation. And on what decision did they decide to pay out this compensation? It's quite clear, Count Corla, from the information I have received from various sources, that, that, and including from the managing director in his own press release, where he says that the legal position was far from clear. Well, the question I have for RTE here today is, if the position was far from clear and they had various pieces of legal uh, advice given to them over a number of weeks, stating basically that they shouldn't pay to that they should pay, on what basis did they decide to pay this money out? Finally, Count Corley, because I know I'm over time, what I want to say is I know that the legal advice that RTE uh, uh, used uh, to, or sought to pay out this money is a privileged position and we are not uh, entitled to it, but I believe that there has to be a political will. In the, in, the, in the interest of the national public to find out on what basis they paid this out. Because I certainly believe that RT were wrong to pay out this money um, on what was essentially an anti-gay prejudice issue that people were challenged on. Thank you, Count Corley. Thank you. Deputy Button. Thank you, Count Corley, and thank you for letting us raise this matter. Count Corley, the sequence of events arising from the Saturday Night Show give rise to very serious concerns about how public discourse is conducted, the language we use, the labels we apply to others, and in particular, more importantly, the role of a public service broadcaster. I do believe Minister RT were erroneous and were wrong in what they did. I think they folded too quickly, and I would like to ask you, who advised? What was the nature of the advice? What was their intent in the advice in terms of why did they fold up tents so quickly and were they involved in any other organisations other than advising RTE. Our public service broadcaster has an obligation to provide balanced, responsible, fair transmission of social matters and social issues. And it must also, as a public service broadcaster, facilitate fair and balanced debate on matters of absolute public importance. And central to this obligation, Kion Cola, I believe, must be an entitlement of those participating on programmes in RTE to voice honestly held opinions and make fair comment. RTE must act as a fair arbitrator and stand by the right of people on its platforms to voice honestly held opinions. Otherwise, it acts to undermine its public service remit. And I, can call it, I contrast the role of RTE and its duty in this case with what happened in the Abbey Theatre a couple of weeks ago, where the whole issue of homophobia and the whole issue of LGBT rights was fully explored on the stage of the Abbey. Yet you contrast that with RTE, where it parked at the first opportunity, a debate on this. What would happen if we were discussing racism? Would somebody who was accused of racism have to come on and defend themselves? As Deputy Lyons has rightly made, said Kieran Corner, I conclude in this, we have made so many advances in the area of rights for gay people in this country. But where there is homophobia, it must be challenged, it must be stood up to, and I would hope that through this chamber, Kian Corla, and through this debate today, that we can have a national discourse leading to the referendum on marriage equality. Go on, Margaret.
Two minutes. Good. Can uh, The appearance of Rory O'Neill, aka Panty, on RTE Saturday Night Show has sparked a debate, a debate on homophobia in Ireland. Rory O'Neill identified a number of individuals as having homophobic beliefs. Now, I could go into debate on what these people have said and written, and, it could, and how it could be identified as homophobic. However, I'm willing to rely on Rory O'Neill and his alter ego, uh, ego Panty as a leading figure in Ireland's LGBT movement to know what homophobia is. I'm a straight, middle-aged man. I won't pretend that I know how members of the LGBT community are made to feel every day when they're faced with news articles in newspapers, comments on the radio, abuse on the street, and even accusations within the chambers of this institution. But what I will discuss is RTE's censorship of Rory O'Neill and the debate surrounding homophobia. The government has promised a referendum on marriage equality in 2015, following a recommendation by a majority of the Constitutional Convention to amend the Constitution to allow same-sex marriage. Now, those who publicly advocate inequality cannot hide behind defamation legislation when they are called out on their views they seek uh, to gain public support for. The demand of significant sums of public money by such individuals or group in place of a right to reply sets a deeply, a deeply worrying precedent. Now, this country has a poor history of censorship. For many years, some of our great authors suffered at the hands of the censorship board. Section 31 kept Republicans such as myself off the airwaves for many years. RTE has this tradition uh, of facilitating uh, censorship and as the public service broadcaster, it's deeply worrying to see this rear its head again. It should not be the case that those who call homophobia for what, uh, out for what it is, that should suffer the censorship. The payout from RTE has potentially big, huge implications for the way in which the debate on marriage equality is carried out. And as RTE receives funding from the taxpayer, the public have a right to know what legal advice they receive before making this payout. Thank you, Deputy. Thank you. Deputy Daly. Thanks, Ken Corl. I think it's really important that as, as taxpayers, citizens and public representatives that we put on record how appalled we are by what RTE has done in uh, this case. And I honestly believe that in many ways this will be a defining moment. A new minister will be judged on how you deal with this and what happens next, because at the core of this are issues of freedom of expression and basic human rights. And I have to say, as somebody who's had some pretty horrible and inaccurate things said about me in the media, I know how difficult it is to get that corrected. So that makes it, if you like, doubly unbelievable how quickly and I, I don't know why RTE handed over money in this regard because nothing inaccurate was said and that is a critical point. The people and the organisations who benefited from this payout have clearly argued that LGBT people should be treated differently and that is nothing else other than homophobia and to call it anything else is in my opinion an abuse of language. Now Brendan O'Connor's apology remarkably said that it is an important part of democratic debate that people should be entitled to hold dissenting views on controversial subjects and that is absolutely the case. Case. But that means that you also have to have the right to express a different opinion on that dissenting view and call it by its proper name. And as Deputy Buttermer said, if someone is known to be a racist, has expressed racist views, and we call them a racist, are we to then turn around and apologise for calling them by the right name? Now, this issue has enormous consequences for Irish society, and we as a parliament have to send a strong signal that we will not tolerate homophobia. And unless this issue is addressed, the only conclusion that people will draw is is that if you have big pockets, then you can use them to stifle debate and control opinion, and Irish people don't want to live in a society like that. Thank you. Deputy Flanagan. Um, unlike some of the members here, I'm not in uh, any way surprised, or I haven't learned anything about how RT are biased from this case. Uh, this is one of many cases where they have shown their bias. And uh, sadly, they're meant to be a public service broadcaster, but uh, they seem to have their own agenda on many different issues. Now, hopefully something good will come out of this. 
And one good thing that has come out of it is that we get people like Michael Culreevy or myself from Leitrim or from Roscommon who can proudly stand up here and say we want to defend gay rights. Forty years ago, you'd have been worried going home if you did what Michael did here today. And that is massive progress. It really, really is. And the idea, it would be nice if there was no homophobia, but uh, pretending there isn't uh, doesn't make it all go away. And that speech that was made in the Abbey Theatre explained it so beautifully. And the fact that we are all homophobic, we are, but it's a ca case of working on it and trying to learn about the whole situation and fighting against it. And in the end, everyone gets their rights. But sadly, some people are more homophobic than others, and some people don't seem to make any effort to deal with that homophobia. And I think it's sad that uh, you're now being denied even the right to use the word. And this morning on RTE, I discovered there's another word banned by RTE. You're not allowed to use the word belly hay either. And that's a gay rights issue too, because guess what? The 70 billion they robbed off us in Europe, it's actually affecting people who are gay as well as straight too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Murphy. Um, jean Carl, for the last couple of weeks, some of us have felt that we've been living in a parallel universe. A huge debate has been taking place online through sites like the Journal, Broadsheet, the Twitter and Facebook, with ma the mainstream media, print media largely uh, absent from that debate. The head of television on RTE yesterday explained to staff wh and, uh, why they apologised and paid 85000 uh, that screams to me of discontent within RTE. It's obvious that many of the station's personnel know that there are times that defending the principles behind public service broadcasting ranks higher than the fear of litigation. John Waters, Breda O'Brien and the Iona Institute can all be described as opinion formers. They have made themselves uh, part of the public discourse, I stress public discourse, on such issues as same-sex marriage and frequently present gay people's relation, relationships as less than as a starting point. For that to go without challenge is for me about setting the parameters of the debate, of the debate to their advantage. Uh, and it's, it, that's at a time that we're going to have a referendum next year, and I think that that is time-wise of critical importance. So why the rush by RTE to apologise and pay? Was it because they were aware, aware, of those, uh, by, uh, aware that those complaining had deep pockets and the ability to mount a credible legal challenge? If so, we must ask the question, how did those pockets get so filled? The second issue is one of the, um, one of the people making com uh, complaints, uh, one of the complaints that came was from John Waters, who was then a board member of RTE's regulating body, the BAI. Is it not a massive conflict of interest? Um, and was RTE under additional duress? Why did the BAI suddenly change their code of conduct on the 22nd of January, the day the same day RTE agreed the payout. Thank you. Is that the reason John Waters resigned from the BAI on the 24th, or did you, Minister, ask him to resign? Given the massive payout and the obvious co of conflict of interest, Minister, um, do you believe, as I do, that he should return that money to RTE? Deputy Wallace. Thank you. Carla. I too watched Panty's speech at the Abbey Theatre, and it is powerful. It is very powerful. One would think that RTE had an obligation to facilitate free and open debate. In this instance, it failed miserably. Some people are now more offended by the word homophobia than they are by homophobia itself. This is censorship. In a press release last week, Minister, you said that homophobia is too low to the term to be used to categorise those who hold contrary views, contrary views on what is a matter for legitimate public debate. I would point out that it is not for heterosexuals to define what homophobia is. We do not have the right to tell gay people what does or doesn't constitute homophobia. 
This was eloquently summed up by Panty Bliss in a rabbi theatre speech last weekend when she said, So now, Irish gay people find ourselves in a ludicrous situation where not only are we not allowed to say publicly what we feel oppressed by, we are not even allowed to think it because our definition has been disallowed by our betters. The word homophobia is no longer available to gay people, which is a spectacular and neat Orwellian trick because now it turns out that gay people are not the victims of homophobia, homophobes are. Does the minister think that these contrary views, as he calls them, have no impact? Does he believe there is no link between discriminatory comments about gay people and physical attacks on gay people? Where does the minister think those who commit physical acts of violence against gay people get their ideas from? To quote Breda O'Brien, equality must take second place to the common good. Does the minister honestly think these words have no impact on gay people? Thank you. Minister to reply. So, uh, Ken Corley, firstly, I want to thank the deputies for raising this issue, <clears throat> and I welcome the opportunity to discuss it in the House. And I acknowledge the range of deputies across the parties and independents who have expressed here this evening a broadly similar view. Uh, I did say recently that, uh, personally, I would not use the term homophobe to describe those who disagree with me on issues of gay equality uh, in general, or gay marriage in particular. I thought it was too loaded a term to be used to categorise all those who hold contrary views on a matter for legitimate public debate. Some people I know, as Deputy Wallace has just said, and whose views I respect, may have misinterpreted those comments. They say I do not appreciate the subtle and insidious nature of homophobia. I thought I was making a somewhat different and subtle point of my own. Issues like this are informed by deep-felt religious, moral and social considerations. Opinion will undoubtedly be divided. The best that we can hope is that people debate the matter calmly in good faith and with respect for opposing viewpoints. But it is of no assistance at all if we lump together our opponents, all those who will vote no, by borrowing from the lexicon of liberal intolerance. I also said last week in the same statement that I hoped that people who hold themselves out as commentators on or contributors to public debate fully appreciate that debate can be robust, heated, personal and sometimes even hostile. Politicians are expected including, I suspect, by some of the litigants here concerned, to function in such an environment as normal. So why do they apply a different norm to themselves, although at least some of them are not averse to name-calling politicians on occasion? It would be a matter of serious concern if recourse to our defamation laws was to have a chilling effect on public debate on this issue in the lead-in to the referendum. While the defamation laws are outside my remit, Cancolia, the Broadcasting Act is not. At present, Section 39 requires every broadcaster to ensure that nothing is broadcast that may reasonably be regarded as causing offence. That seems to me to be an unfeasibly rigorous approach. We all know how easy it is for some people to be offended, even where offence was not intended and is not objectively ascertainable. I will shortly be proposing miscellaneous amendments to the Act. Among them, I am now considering an amendment that would require broadcasters to avoid causing undue offence. That seems to me to be a more objective and more in tune with the realities of public debate. As we all know, RTE is an independent public service broadcaster. It is obliged to be responsive to the interests and concerns of the whole community to reflect the varied elements that make up the culture of the Irish people and to uphold the democratic values enshrined in the Constitution, especially those relating to rightful liberty of expression. The Broadcasting Act of 2009 provides that the company is independent in pursuance of these objects. I, as Minister, have no role in managing editorial matters, making decisions around programming or dealing with litigation claims. I therefore have no intention of interfering in RTE's management 
of this specific file. I have read yesterday's statement from the Managing Director of RTE Television. RTE has a crucial role in the conduct of public debate and I believe it remains fully committed to ensuring the full and free exchange of information and opinion on all matters of legitimate public interest. And finally, while RTE is of course answerable as a public body, it does not, in my view should not, operate under political supervision, either at ministerial or parliamentary level. I have seen the invitation to RTE from the communications, uh, the Oireachtas Communications Committee, provided the engagement takes place at the general level of principle, without reference to the specifics of an individual case, I fully agree that the committee is entitled to hear from RTE an outline of its approach to libel complaints in the context of its obligations as a public service broadcaster. The committee is also entitled to satisfy itself that RTE will continue to discharge its public service obligations without fear or favour. However, it would not be desirable, in my view, for the committee to become embroiled in the management of particular claims. Ultimately, in Cancorlia, we rely on our broadcasters to provide a forum for matters of public debate and indeed controversy, and to ensure that when these take place, the necessary level playing field is provided for all concerned. Thank you. Deputy Lyons. Thank you, Cancorlia. Minister, thank you for your response. Um, I really just want to say at this stage, because I actually have this one minute left, you know, there's two people, I think, in here at the moment who knows what homophobia feels like, who knows what it's like to be called a queer, to be called a fag, to be called a gay. Only recently, I think, just before Christmas, I walked from my own house around to the centre where a bunch of teenagers called me gay or some other name they call us, you know? I thought, you know, I was living in a society where this stuff isn't acceptable anymore. But yet, when people challenge people on these issues, and that's what Rory O'Neill did on the Saturday Night Show, he called it what it is. When it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, looks like a duck, it must be a duck. And I think RT were completely wrong and bang out of order when they got numerous types of legal advice saying in fact that perhaps they should not even pursue and give any sort of compensation out. RT got it wrong and everybody in the public knows they got it wrong and RT need to come out and let us know that they got it wrong. Otherwise there will not be confidence in our national broadcaster to mediate any debate with confidence, particularly around issues that affect my life and the people who love me and love all the other people who aren't treated properly in this society. Thank you, Count Corla. Thank you. Deputy Buttle. Corla, I fully accept the Minister's uh, position regarding involvement in, in the day-to-day -day management of RTE. But, Count Corla, we as a society, and this Parliament has a role to play, and the national broadcaster. And, Minister, RTE got it wrong. They got it completely wrong, and they folded their tent in. And in this House this week, Count Corla, in this Oireachtas, we were told as gay people that it's a matter of social re-engineering by the gay ideological movement. And I'm quoting from a member of British Senate. And Kian Kola, let me put in the record of this house as I've done before. I speak here not just as a gay person, but as a member of society who wants to be treated equally. I've been beaten, spat, chased, harassed and mocked like Deputy Lyons because of who I am. I was born with a gift given to me and I spent most of my life struggling and I'm finally at a place in my own country which I love to be accepted and to see the support from my fellow colleagues here in this house and from you, Kian Kola, is a demonstration of how our society has gone and come forward. But I will not, Kian Kola, in a tolerant, respectful debate, allow people who spout hatred, intolerance to be left go unchecked. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Colbury, uh, Minister, you, you say that it's not up to, to the Minister, it's not up to Parliament to have oversight of the day-to-day -day operations of RTE. Yes. But if this Parliament and if you as Minister do not say that was wrong, if we don't identify it as been wrong, then we support it. And it will happen again. And it will happen again. And there will be people out there waiting to be offended, doing automated word searches to find offence. And I know people, many of whom would have been far more seriously aggrieved at what happened to them and what was said to them on RTE. They didn't rush to claim the money on it. We need, as a parliament, to point out that this was wrong and we do not want to see it happen again.
Thank you, Deputy. Deputy Daly. Yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed with your response, Minister, because you seem to have maybe tried to justify some of the comments last week and maybe you've missed some of the points, because I think nobody has said that these people don't have a right to express their opinions. The issue here is that other people have the right to call it by its proper name and challenge that without being censored. Now, you say in your statement that it would be a matter of serious concern if recourse to our defamation laws was to have a chilling effect on public debate. What we're saying here today is that it is a matter of serious concern that this issue has happened and that there will be consequences unless we take action. I don't know if you saw the Channel 4 programme uh, broadcast last night, which linked an increase in violent attacks on gay people in Russia with the Russian government's um, treatment of gay people and its explicit homophobia. These actions have consequences. And for the likes of Brendan O'Connor to turn around to somebody in his audience last week who told about being beaten up for being gay and to say, oh, well, that's real homophobia. I mean, that is just an absolute ridiculous assertion. RTE needs to be, it needs to be independent. It needs to be balanced. And I honestly think that the best thing you could do to take society forward on this is to ask the Department of Education to make it mandatory that all schools will be allowed to listen to the Panty Bliss uh, interview uh, at the Risen People, Thank because you. I think society would be far better if people were to hear that interview. Thank you. Deputy Flanagan. Uh, we're at a potential point here where we go backwards and forget about all the gains that have been made on this issue over the years, or uh, we basically drive it further forward by fighting what RTE have done, uh, getting them to roll back on what they've done, and actually, in the end, that would end up being a good news story overall. Because while we have won many battles on this one, it is still an acceptable term of abuse to suggest that, well, you, to say to someone in a national school in this country, you're gay, which means there's something wrong with you. Not necessarily your sexuality, but it's used as a negative term. It's in the secondary schools, I know of a debate that an 11-year-old girl took part in in a national school in my town where she stood up and spoke in favour of gay marriage and the whole classroom basically told her, hold on a minute, what are you on about? Started laughing at her, etc. They're hearing that somewhere at home. And we need to drive this forward rather than going back into the dark ages. And unfortunately, you have pointed the compass in the wrong direction, Minister. Thank you. Deputy Murphy. Yeah, the very fact that this is our public service broadcaster is of critical importance um, because we expect a higher standard, we expect balance because we pay a licence fee. Um, we expect them to, to defend the principles that are the prin principles of public service broadcasting. And if that means, you know, taking up the challenge of litigation, that has to be taken up. Because you start with one thing, and all of a sudden you find that you're eroding a whole lot of principles and rights uh, in terms of debate. And I just don't think in a democracy that we can accept that. Minister, I asked you a number of questions about the Code of Conduct. Um, it was changed the day the, uh, the payout happened. There was a resignation the day after. Did you have any knowledge of that? Did you have any uh, involvement in, in requesting that, uh, um, uh, that resignation? And do you see this as a massive conflict of interest um, by somebody who was a litigant? And I believe that the money should be paid back uh, because I believe there is an absolutely massive conflict of interest here. Thank you. Deputy Wallace. Thank you. Hold it. Minister, you say that RTE is an independent broadcaster. It depends on the good favour of the government of the day. It depends on big business for advertising. I don't find it so independent. I got an email today from Ross Golden Bannon and he said, our community and our supporters now face into a campaign for the referendum on marriage equality in 2015 with one hand tied behind our backs. The most distressful part for those of us now silenced from using the word homophobia is that the mainstream media don't see how they have played, been played with the legal hand. I heard Colin McGorman say today, as a result of RTE's capitulation, it is going to be more difficult to challenge positions adopted by those who oppose equality. 
more difficult to question if prejudice and discrimination underpin their opposition to a fundamental human right. We do well to remember that without a properly informed citizenry, there is no democracy. Thank you. Minister. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Ken Corley. I, I mean, uh, f f firstly, to, to get the conspiracy theories out of the way, um, uh, the Code of Conduct has, has coincidence has nothing to do with this deputy. The first, I didn't see the programme at the time. I made it my business to see it since. Uh, the first I heard about it was when uh, I was advised of the resignation of a member of the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland. Um, and I presume he resigned uh, because he was envisaging litigation uh, against RTE. So anything else is purely coincident, uh, and I can assure you has, has, has nothing to do with, with that. Um, uh, I think it is one thing to express the view that homophobia uh, poisons the water that can nurture violence, as Deputy Daly instanced in the case of uh, what we saw in respect of Russia. Uh, but I think it's another thing to um, uh, seek to intrude into or ascribe motivation to the RTE decision in respect of the um, contemplated litigation. I mean, the RTE uh, explanation, if you like, is that it had expert advice as I understand it, inside and outside, available to it, that advised uh, that uh, it didn't have a case to defend. And as a result, made the decision it made. Now, there, it is true, as you've said, uh, Deputy Murphy, that um, uh, RTE is the public service broadcaster. It's also true to say that it is a commercial company and it made a commercial decision, as it may, makes frequently in respect of uh, contemplated defamation actions uh, and so on. It's not an exception. Uh, and it made the decision. Um, I think, uh, can call you, colleagues in the House um, are entitled to bring to bear their own judgment uh, on the merits of that decision and whether they would have made the same decision. Uh, whether. Uh, the principles that have been um, adduced here uh, override uh, reliance on purely commercial uh, decision making. Uh, but the RTE explanation, I repeat, is that uh, this was another file, they got expert <coughs> legal advice and they made the decision uh, that they made. I, I wonder, Ken Corlea, I wonder uh, if in the medium and longer term, in terms of public discourse on such a fundamentally important issue as this, will have been damaged by this controversy. It seems to me that this far out from the referendum, that it may be no harm at all that these issues have been ventilated now. It's plain that this House is of a, a singular view uh, I don't think that that message uh, can't fail to go out from here. Uh, but I still stand by my position that I um, draw a distinction uh, between my intruding in the management of any particular litigation file and my uh, require, requiring of RTE uh, to in no way resile from the obligation on RTE uh, to discharge its public service uh, imposition um, under the Act. Thank you. And I think that's the uh, critical thing um, uh, as we prepare, put the building blocks in place uh, for the ultimate referendum. Am I good?